Okay, so we're just gonna review some of the stuff we went over on the unit circle. Remember that on the unit circle, we have a radius of one. So to find the circumference of the unit circle, when we put one in for R, we just say the circumference is two pi radians. Remember, radians is the unit, not that it's, yeah. Um, so we are now talking about uh, one fourth of the way around the unit circle. So since we want one fourth, we are gonna take one fourth times a full revolution of two pi. Okay, so that technically gives us two pi over four which reduces to the one-half pi. And then we talked about this in the last class that you put the pi in the numerator and that's why it simplifies two pi halves. All right, next we're gonna look uh, about traveling the circumference one twelfth of the way. <clears throat> so again, when you multiply, you multiply uh, the whole number with the numerator to get two pi over 12, and of course, when you divide by two, numerator and denominator, you get the pi over six. Then we have three pi, I mean, sorry, three eighths of the distance. So again, three times two is what gives you the six pi over eight. And then reducing by dividing both by two, we get three pi fourths. And then last but not least, we do five, six of the distance. So multiplying it again by two pi. Again, five times two is what gives you the 10 pi over six. And again, dividing both by two, it reduces to five pi thirds. All right. So now we're gonna talk about marking the point um, on the unit circle. <clears throat> so remember that a full rotation around the unit circle with uh, four being the denominator is technically two pi converted to <clears throat> a denominator of four. So of course we multiply the top by four and the bottom by four, and that is how we get eight pi over four. Of course, to get to nine pi over four, we're gonna add one more pi over four. <clears throat> okay, so because this is a positive angle, we've talked again about uh, rotation will be counterclockwise from the positive x axis. So from here, we know we are gonna go at least one rotation, two pi or eight pi over four, and then we're gonna do one, one more pi force here. So that would be the angle of rotation. So that would be this point on the unit circle. Okay, next we're going to look at the point negative seven pi <clears throat> over six. So if you turn the paper, it does kind of show you the math. Um, but remember if we are going, so I'm gonna come back to this page um, in a minute. No, we're gonna move to the next page. So on the next page, we're going to deal with, okay, I saw it. I cleaned this up. Sorry, there we go. So, um, I talked to you guys about, hopefully, I forgot to do it in one or two classes, but I talked to you about rotation. Now, seven pi over six, okay? Again, seven is one more then six, so that means I'm gonna go one more than pi, radian, uh, pi radians. Now I know I went 
uh, counterclockwise to represent 7 pi 6. Okay, so what we talked about in class is that the negative rotation is going to basically put your uh, negative angle in the quadrant that you would be reflecting over the, uh, the x-axis. So since this is in quadrant three, the negative angle is going to be quadrant two. And again, the rotation here is clockwise. So we're gonna go more than uh, one half of a rotation, one pi, plus one more sixth of a pi. So this is a rotation in red. The red one is negative seven pi over six. And again, filling in over here, negative means you go clockwise around the unit circle. Again, going negative six pi over six is what gets you to negative pi. And we need to go one more so we get the negative one six over pi. So again, putting that rotation here and drawing the radius out to mark the point on the circle, okay? Okay, so we um, used an activity to, um, to talk about degrees and radians, but there is a formula for you to convert from degree measure to radian measure and the opposite, radian to degrees. So notice to go from degree to radian measure, you're going to multiply your degrees by pi over 180, pi radians over 180, whereas if you're converting from radians back to degrees, you're gonna multiply your radian measure by 180 over pi radians. <clears throat> okay, so let's look. The first one here shows that we have 120 degrees. <clears throat> so, um, to multiply by pi, uh, to convert to radians, we're gonna multiply by pi radians over 180. So notice, because we want an exact answer in pi radian form, we're really only gonna deal with dividing 120 over 180, <clears throat> okay, which gets us two over three, and then of course they just move the pi up to the numerator. So we get in exact form that 120 degrees, when we talk about radians, is two pi radians distance along the circumference. Okay, we have another one with converting from degrees to um, radians. So we remember we take the degrees uh, and we multiply it by the pi radians over 180. So again, you want to leave pi in your answer, so don't put that in your calculator. You're just gonna put negative 297.25 divided by 180. This case, you get to use a decimal instead of pi. So you get negative 0.519 radians, okay? So as always, guys, pay attention to the instructions on what way you're supposed to answer your answer. Up here, we got two pi over three radians. That's your exact answer. This is your approximate answer, okay? So in the next one, they obviously just asked for the approximate <coughs> radians. So we've done some conversion from angles to radian measure. Again, radian measure is, uh, is the angle of rotation 
the radium measure theta of a rotation is the ratio of the distance S traveled by a point at a radius R from the center of rotation. I know that's like, what the what? Okay, but we'll get it explained a little more here. So notice in the box, we have, uh, oops, I skipped a page. So I had a feeling we should do this. All right, so let's talk about converting three pi force radians back two degrees. So you take what you're given, in this case, three pi force radians, and now we are going to multiply by 180 over pi radians. Of course, the radian measurement cancels out, and also, because we have one in the numerator and denominator, the pi cancels out. So technically, I'm going down to here, because I didn't cross out pi in that first step. I'm going down here, I have three times 180 over four, and that's how it simplifies to uh, the degrees of 135. Same thing here. Um, so notice when they don't give you um, uh, one of our special angles, we're gonna answer with a decimal. So again, we're doing 8.5 times 180 over pi radians. So in this case, the radians do cancel out, but in our calculator, we will put in 8.5 times 180 divided by pi. And you do not want to put the rounded 3.14 you want to use the pi button on your calculator, and that is located after you hit the second button and the house key button, okay? So pi is at second button, and the caret, or I call it the house top button, okay? Right above it, you'll see the pi sign. All right, so we again discussed a little bit coterminal angles. So coterminal angles. Um, remember our angles that both start from the X, positive X axis and they both end up with the same terminal side of the angle. So what it asks us to do here is to find a positive and negative angle that are coterminal with two pi thirds. So just graphically, we know that two pi thirds is in quadrant two. So we are looking for another angle positive angle, so we're gonna go uh, counterclockwise. <clears throat> and the best way to land in the same place is to go completely one rotation and then to the same terminal side. So a complete rotation, remember, is of a length two pi, but now we're adding, so when you're adding for um, fractions, you have to convert this uh, 2 pi into an equivalent fraction, and it's very easy, guys. You just multiply the 2 pi by 3, and you put the 3 in the denominator. It's the same value. So that's why over here we get 6 pi over 3. Now we just add the tops to get 8 pi over 3. So that is our positive rotation, the one in green over here. Now they want us to find a negative coterminal angle. So negative means we go clockwise. So, oh, this uh, has us going three rotations. So let me do a little drawing here because... Um, that's a mess up there. 
So we know that this is uh, in counterclockwise position, this is um, two pi thirds, but they want us to go count, uh, clockwise. Notice they want us to go three times around the um, unit circle or the origin. So we're gonna go one, two, three, and here. Okay. So, first thing they do is multiply those three revolutions um, by three. So that's how they get six pi here. So again, our denominator is three, so we're gonna multiply um, six times three to get 18 pi, and of course, we're gonna put three in the denominator. So two minus 18 leaves us with negative 16 pi thirds. <clears throat> okay, so that's, um, All right, so that's finding the positive and negative cotermal angles. Of course, with degrees, it'd be a little bit easier. You would add or subtract 360 to get a coterminal angle in degrees. Okay, so let's remember that um, the complement of an angle means that it's angle one plus angle two is equal to 90, whereas the supplement is angle one plus angle two is equal to 180, okay? Well, in terms of radians, as it's showing you over here on the left, 90 in radians is pi over two. <clears throat> so we know that angle one plus angle two is going to, in radians, is going to equal pi halves. So, in order to find the complement, um, you take pi halves and you subtract whichever one of the angles, let's say angle two, you subtract angle two to find the first angle. So that's exactly what we're doing here. Of course, now we get into fractions with different denominators, but I can make pi halves have the same denominator by, again, multiplying the top and bottom by three. So we get three pi over six minus the pi over six. That simplifies to two pi over six. And then when we reduce that by dividing the twos out of the top and the bottom, you just end up with pi thirds. All right. So again, in radians, 180 degrees is the same as pi. So again, to find its supplement, we're gonna take pi and subtract the angle we're given. So pi, of course, is not in fraction form. I multiply that by six and I put it the denominator of six. So that's how we get six pi over six minus pi over six. So we get the supplementary angle is five pi over six. All right. Now we are going to talk about uh, radian measure again. Okay, and as we said, radian measure is the fact that we are circling the circumference at, um, so that the degree or the angle of rotation is the ratio of the distance traveled. So for example, let's just say this is the point on the circle. We want the distance traveled 
by the point to intersect with the radius, uh, the radius intersecting at that same point on the circle. So notice here, we find theta by taking, this again is called, this small section of the circumference is called the arc length. So that is what your S stands for. So S is arc length. Of course, we know R is the length of the radius, okay? We want theta to always be in radians when we do this uh, calculation and that the arc length and the radius must be in the same unit like you'll see first one we have meters. <clears throat> so the radians, find the measure of rotation in radians when a point is two meters from the center of rotation so that's your radius, two meters from the center of rotation, and it travels four meters along the circumference. So that is why we have four is your arc length divided by two, which is your radius. So your angle uh, in radians is two radians, okay? So doing the same thing here, they give us a radius of five, but this time they give you the angle of pi thirds. So they give you theta. So you can manipulate this equation by, because I want to find uh, arc length or S, if I multiply both sides by R, that of course gets rid of this R, and that's why we can say Another form of this equation is the arc length equals the radius times the angle in radians, okay? So, again, our uh, radius here is five centimeters, okay? Times pi over three, so they let, they're letting us uh, round it. Of course, this in exact measurement would be 15 pi over 3. But approximately, again, always when you see these, always use the pi symbol, not an abbreviated thing like 3.14. So notice that, remember, the arc length and the radius have to be the same unit measure. So that's why we would say that the arc length is 5.24 centimeters in length. All right, next we're gonna talk about linear speed and angular speed. Of course, linear speed is how far, uh, how fast you um, go from one point to another on a straight line. And then angular speed is how uh, the speed of your angle of rotation, okay? How quickly is the uh, rotation near the center of, in this case, we'll talk about speed and all of those different things. Um, notice the full formula, V, which we usually say stands for velocity, is the radius times this guy, this little weird W, which is called in Greek, omega. Okay. Notice it is the angular speed in radians per unit of time. Okay. <clears throat> Notice that in this case, the units for the distance of V and R must be the same. And then for omega, it has to be radians per unit of time, like we just mentioned and the units of time for um, V and omega must also be the same. So is, this is uh, 
a little bit more uh, work because we do have to make sure the uh, units for distance and the units for time are the same. So if we look at this first example, it tells us an Earth satellite in circular orbit 12 kilometers high must make one complete revolution every 90 minutes. What is its linear speed? Okay, so linear speed, we're gonna talk about, again, you can always manipulate this equation. So we can change this, since I'm solving for omega. Um, oh, okay, so omega is, again, the angle of rotation per unit of time, okay? So one complete um, revolution uh, takes place in 90 minutes, okay? So let's reduce that. We get that it travels pi distance in 45 minutes, okay? <clears throat> so then from there, we're gonna substitute um, the radius in for um, the radius and the omega. So where did they get 7,600? Well, the next part tells you that the radius of the Earth is 6,400 kilometers. Ugh, that's messy. But remember the satellite is orbiting 1,200 more kilometers from the surface of the Earth. Let me make that smaller. Okay, so this is your, I'm just gonna put a big X for your satellite. So that's why the entire radius for this guy to circle the Earth, his orbit, is going to be the 7,600. Okay, so again, we're uh, multiplying the radius with the speed per minute. <clears throat> so we get 7,600 pi kilometers, because you're multiplying this with the pi, over the 45 minutes. Okay, of course, dividing the mathematical part, we get uh, 531 kilometers per, per minute. Again, that is the linear speed. How um, quickly is the satellite moving around the Earth? <clears throat> okay. Next example we're gonna talk about is angular speed. So in example 10, um, we talk about angular speed, okay? So if you think of this, an anchor on a Navy vessel is hoisted at a rate of two feet per second <clears throat> as the line is wound around a capstan, okay? Uh, if it helps, just think of uh, a spool of thread and you're wrapping the thread around that spool, okay, and it tells us that that uh, has a 1.8 yard diameter. It wants to know what is the angular speed of the capstan, okay? So how fast is the um, angle being rotated through 360 or two pi? How quickly is it um, spinning up for that angular measure? So we're looking back at the same formula. It says first we need to find R and B, and they have to be the same. So we know since they gave us the diameter, we're gonna have to find the radius by dividing it by two. And then because we want uh, it to be in feet, 
because this time here was given feet per second. So we gotta get rid of feet. How many feet are there in a yard? Or how many feet are there in one point? No, I'm sorry. How many feet are there in a yard? We know it's three feet in a yard. Okay, so that can cancel out the yard uh, unit of measure. We get 1.8 times three divided by two, and that comes out to about 2.7 feet. Okay, so that's how long our radius is. All right, again, you can use either formula. They're the same formula, just different forms. So we were told that the uh, the rate of that it is wound up is two feet per second. <clears throat> so we know that we have two feet per second. So, and we know the radius, the radius here is 2.7 feet. Separating it so we can look at the units, okay? So I put two feet over one second, and then I put um, one over 2.7 feet, just changing the fraction a bit. So the feet units will cancel out. Of course, when we multiply, we get two over 2.7 seconds. So putting that into your calculator, it actually comes out to 0.741 uh, radians per second, okay? All right, we just have a couple more. So next we're gonna look at example 11. Okay, we're gonna talk about the angle of revolution. So our example is a Dodge, it's traveling at a speed of 70 miles per hour. Okay, so we've got miles per hour. Uh, the tires have an outside diameter of 29.86 inches. And then it says find the angle through which a, the tire, uh, the, the tire turns in just 10 seconds. So in 10 seconds at 70 miles per hour, um, what's the angle that we get from the t uh, rotation? <clears throat> okay, so we looked at this formula earlier, that omega or the linear speed is equal to the um, angle of rotation divided by the time. And then, of course, you can convert it by multiplying both sides by t to get this new, new but exactly same equation, just solving it for the variable we want to. So notice the first thing I need to do is because we're talking about seconds here, I need to get rid of the unit of minutes, I mean, sorry, of hours, and we need to get rid of miles because we are talking about inches, okay? So, with that being said, 70 miles per hour, to get rid of per hour, I've got to remember that in an hour, there are 60 minutes, okay? In a minute, in a minute there are 60 seconds, and then the feet per mile, so we get 5,280 feet, Per one mile. So from here you're going to cancel out any units that you can. And so notice I have minutes and minutes, hours and hours, miles and miles. So notice the only units left are 50 feet per second. Okay, feet per second. So if I look at the top, the only numeric values I have are 5280 
in the denominator, we get 60 times 60, which is 3,600. So when we put that in our calculator, we get that the uh, um, speed here is 102.667 feet per second. That's your linear speed. Okay. In order to find um, our omega, the weird W, we are going to, again, re uh, put it into this format. So we take the fact that we have a diameter given to us earlier in the problem of 29.86. So we take a half of that or divide it by 2. So now we have a radius of 14.93. Okay, and again, we need to convert uh, this inches um, to a common measurement. Well, up here we have feet per second, so we're going to convert it to feet, and we're going to use the fact that one foot is uh, this, uh, 12 inches are in one foot. So again, uh, the inches will cancel out, and in the calculator, you'll put the 14.93 divided by the 12, and you can see here that the radius in feet is approximately 1.24 feet. So next, we take all of those conversions that we've just did. Okay. We found out that the velocity or linear speed was 102.667 feet per second. And then we find uh, omega by using the fact that we just found the radius up here, 1.24 feet, times omega. So since I'm solving for omega, or that variable, that's why you are then going to divide the left-hand side by 1.24. Again, notice the feet cancel out. So we get that the angular speed is 82.80 radians per second. Okay. And our final lovely word problem. Oh, sorry, we've got to finish this guy out. Because that is your angular speed of the tire going 70 miles per hour. But remember, we want the uh, angle of rotation that um, happens in 10 seconds on that tire. So we're going to need to take the uh, angular speed here and multiply it by the 10 seconds. And so here, we end up, when we multiply the 82.80 by 10, of 828 um, radians for your angle of measurement, okay? So again, the angle in radians through which the tire turns in 10 seconds is 828. Okay, here we go, last one. We're talking about two gears, one big, and one small that uh, basically their teeth interact. I am not a good drawer, so I'm just going to put some teeth here and then some teeth here for your smaller gear. Okay, so the speed uh, or the radius for the big one is nine, the radius for the smaller gear is five inches okay it tells us that your smaller wheel will sorry rotates at 48 revolutions per minute that's what the r stands for it's not radius so now they want us to find the angular speed of the larger wheel in radians per second all right so <clears throat> we know that um in this case, 
the velocity has to be the same for both wheels or the gears would get all locked up. <clears throat> so that's what it's showing you here is the angular uh, linear speed for the five inch wheel is going to be five times omega, whereas the bigger wheel, because of its radius, is nine times omega. But since we know the um, linear speed has to be the same, we can now say that the uh, angular speed of the small is, because of the radius, is equal to that, uh, the large. So because we are doing radians per second, as I mentioned above, again, remember this is rotations per minute. So a complete rotation in radians is two pi per one minute, okay? Oh, it did have per minute up here. I think I said hour. <clears throat> so we multiply um, and we get 48 times two is 96 pi. Again, over one minute, but we wanna to convert to seconds. So we know one minute is 60 seconds. So then the minutes cancel out. Um, so we get nine pi over 60, but because pi is still in the answer, you're only gonna do, I'm sorry, this is supposed to be 96 pi, 96, uh, 96 pi over 60, but because we have pi as part of our answer, this is the only part we put in the calculator, and that's how we get the 1.6 pi uh, radians per second. <clears throat> now that's going to be the angular velocity for um, in radians per second instead of uh, per minute. Now we're gonna look at the bigger, um, the bigger gear, and we're gonna use the fact that their linear speed was the same. So again, I found that the speed of the smaller, the angular speed of the smaller was 1.6 pi per second. So that's why I'm gonna replace it here. We're gonna multiply by five. Of course, to get um, the other side by itself, you divide by nine. So notice here, we don't have pi in the answer. So in the calculator, you will actually put five times 1.6 pi, all divided by nine, and then you'll get 2.793 radians per second. Okay, that would be the angular speed of the larger wheel, okay? Again, this is the speed at near the center of rotation. How quickly is it spinning through um, the angles, the angle, radian angle measure uh, of that circular device?